What's up people, Dabs Rules is right here and welcome to Game Gems, episode 7. Last episode we went ahead and looked through the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super NES, like I said. But today we're going through the one that a lot of people didn't vote for and that is the Nintendo 64. Now the Nintendo 64 came out the same time as my birth, 1996. In Japan it came out a little bit earlier and in America they got a little bit later. However... I can still say that the Nintendo 64 system is still one of the highly positive consoles I ever ever owned. I'm talking about some amazing franchises that became from 2D to 3D, which of course is The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, all the way to the Super Mario 64 and Mario Kart. But also, the Nintendo 64 also had its absolute beautiful gems. And I'm going to go through my personal five gems at the moment that I can talk about. Now, like I said, people, I try my very darn hardest to make every single game different to any of the others. So I try not to put, like, three horrors, three side-scrollers, three fighting, three shooters, whatever you want to say it. I want to make sure that they're all different so you guys understand where I'm coming from. And like I said, if you guys want to try and pick these up on the internet, try and do so very soon because they will get rarer by the day and by the years. But as well, if you don't own the Nintendo 64, you may be lucky, you may get yourself the ROM hack on the PC, or you may be even more fortunate, you may get a version of this on the Nintendo Switch's special subscription. As you guys know, I even know a lot of people don't like that, that new subscription. I'm not saying anything about it. But anyhow, this is the five that I picked today for my Nintendo 64 gems. The first one I'm going to go with is my favourite Worms game, and that is Worms Armageddon. And I know Worms Armageddon is on other consoles, but I prefer it on the N64. I really do. I find it a lot more smoother and a lot more entertaining. Now, if you guys have never heard of Worms, you've been lying in a rock for centuries because this has been going on for decades upon decades upon decades and as well they made a new one recently on the ps5 and the xbox worms royale if i remember what it was called that's a really enjoyable game but if you want something that is old school and reminds you of the old worms back on the playstation and the even the omega the omega was where it all first began with lemmings and everything this will beat it because this has everything you want in a Worms game. Fantastic maps, fantastic voice acting, the voice acting in this is quite funny, even though they're high pitched and everything. The difficulty is really good and plus the multiplayer on this is far more superior than any other Worms game. And for some weird reason, the one on the 64 is not really well known to a lot of people it's one of the most rarest ones for worms armageddon than any other console but if you do find it please do pick it up because it is worth it to get and it's a, definitely a gem in my eyes and i can tell you truthfully though it's just a very well made game it's really well made there's lots of worm game worms games that came out way later on in the future like on the ps2 and the PS3 and other Nintendo games like the Nintendo DS didn't get any closer on making a perfect game. This really did make it perfect. This was a perfect Worms game. And it's just a shame that a lot, a lot of people neglected this version and went to play it on other consoles. This is the better version in my eyes and it's definitely a gem in my eyes too. Next up, it can be a massive meme to a lot of people on the internet but easy enough. I'm going to whip your head and shit down your neck. I ate, I need bubble gum, but I ran out of bubble gum. Duke Nukem 64. <laughs> a funny game, a fantastic shooter. It has the same mechanics as Doom and the other type of games, like um, Shadow Warrior that came out on the PS4 and the PS5. But the 3D version of Duke Nukem is so much fun and very much quite funny. And I do, and this, like I said, this is another one of my personal favourite Duke Nukem's that ever got released. It really is. I prefer this one way better than the PS3 version and the Xbox 360 game, which I think was Duke Nukem Forever. And that was absolutely god awful. This is the best one, I think. Some people may think the older ones are better, but I really prefer the 64 one. Now, what do I think? Why do I think this is really a gem? 
Now, like I said, gems are mainly depending on like if they were highly, if they weren't really rec recognised by fans, or they were just not very much well um, praised upon by people and critics. But this one had mixed emotions by a lot of people because a lot of people were not sure if this game was going to be good or not because it was pretty much a more of a um, a funny version of Doom because Doom was quite gruesome. This is a lot more funnier and a bit more entertaining. But it still has its same feel of Doom. So if you do like Doom, you're going to love this. I'm sure of it. Not the Doom that you know now. I'm talking about the Doom back in the old days, like Doom 1, Doom 2 and Doom 3. This is definitely a game to play. And it's definitely a gem in my eyes. If you guys can find it, please give it a go. It's definitely worth it. Next one, there is no... No explanation about any of this, and I tell you what, I'll give you a massive clue. Here's a clip of me in Japan, we literally reenacting it. Yep, it's Nintendo 64's golden boy of the day, GoldenEye. 007's GoldenEye. Everybody knows this. It's a highly recommended game. A lot of people love it. Now, sadly though, this is the thing that happens with these type of games nowadays. When people remember this game, they think it was absolutely amazing. Then they go ahead and play it again in this day of age, and they say it is shit. Because it's just... Sorry about that, people. I had a... A, um, interfering call it, ha it was quite urgent but anyhow back to this um, GoldenEye absolutely ace um, like I said a lot, a lot of people in this day of age think that this game is no longer good anymore because it's not what they remember that's because they've grown older and they don't remember and they haven't played it all day long I play this thing all the time when I'm really really am bored and I still enjoy it the missions are ace they're so much better and the reason why a lot of people think that this is not good anymore is because probably they have played the remake that came on the Nintendo Wii and also on the PlayStation, which was GoldenEye Reloaded, which starred um, the recent James Bond character. And yeah, it was alright. It was just a Call of Duty rip-off. It really was. But this one, though, with the, with the real James Bond, I know a lot of people think Sean Connery is the real James Bond. I prefer the one who is in... Um, Tomorrow Never Dies, and I keep forgetting his name, I do apologise. I'll probably leave the name underneath if I really need to. But this, GoldenEye, is just such the... It's, in my eyes, is the best 007 game out of them all. It really is. A lot of people could say I'm wrong, but uh, it's my opinion, and I'm going to stick with it. So, yeah, this is my gem, 007 GoldenEye. Now, next up, number two. Now, the, the next ones are actually boxed. Um, some of the first one is in bad condition because when I was a child, <laughs> I didn't really care about boxes. So I really hate myself from back then. But this is Rampage 2. Um, quite a hard one to come out. Not a lot of people ever talk about this game. Don't know why. It's a lot of fun. It's way more fun when you play it with two players or three players if you can. Now, pretty much, it's ginormous monsters wrecking the world you can be a massive gorilla a massive rat some massive dinosaur some weird lobster monster literally it's like godzilla but weirder and to be honest it's just a lot of fun it's just pure mayhem and pure explosions and destroying buildings it's super funny it's quite gru it's like a bit gross like a bit of puking a bit of fast and a bit of pissing and shedding but it's just awesome it really really is um it's really hard to explain what the game really is mostly because it's nothing really lost to really say about it. it's just literally massive monsters destroying the world like godzilla did and and mothra and all them lot and if you have no idea what i'm really am talking about it if you really want to i'm like i said i'm showing you clips of the gameplay and everything but if you guys want to really have a good try of this I definitely encourage you to try and get a ROM hack of this, like a, you know, a PC version of this, or get yourself the, um, without me dropping the game. 
or easily just get yourself the actual copy of the game. And I'm sure that the game is not expensive, unless I'm completely wrong. I'll probably leave myself a, a note on my, on my screen right now to say how much this thing is actually worth nowadays. But yeah, that's my number two spot at the moment, uh, Rampage 2, um, Universal Tour. And also, it's made by Midway, which was a massive company for, vi for game, well, video games that were involved with driving. So there's that. And next up, the final one. And as you guys know, my personal collection, a lot of people talk about, I talk about this game all the time when I talk about the Nintendo 64. And that's definitely 100% my biggest gem on my 64 collection. And that is Conker's Bad Fur Day. Boxed. Yep. Boxed. Now, as you guys know, this is like the rarest of the rarest Nintendo 64 games that we all know, unless you talk about grading, grading boxes. But I still think that this is the holy grail of the Nintendo 64. There might be something else out there that is extremely more rare, but I don't know anything else. But, why is this a gem? Because it is a gem. This is the most expensive game on the Nintendo 64 that I know of. It's been highly been praised for a few years now. When it first came out, it was highly hard to come by because when it first came out, there was massive, 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 massive reports on parents for this game to get banned because there was no age rating for it. This one here is like, literally, didn't have any age rating at all when it first came out and kids were buying this. And then all of a sudden, there are all these cartoon characters swearing and all this lot. And, I mean, bunnies with massive knockers, plants with massive knockers. Parents were all in uproar, okay? So Nintendo literally had to try the very down hard to try and pull these out. Try and get rid of them. But sadly, it may have sold a lot of these. And of course, as well, Nintendo did re-release it with an age rate. So, there's that. But still, the damage was already there, though, because parents were not buying it. And sadly, a lot of these versions disappeared. But they did come back, though, because um, a lot of people did keep them. And as well as that, though, it also got itself three remasters. It got this one. It had, of course, the um, Xbox 360 remaster and the Xbox One remaster, as you guys know. However... The other thing about this gem though, is that how much fun this game is, on multiplayer and for the story. The story is really funny because it's got so much cameos of different films like Saving Private Ryan, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Terminator, um, um, what was it, what was the other ones were, um, Groundhog Day, literally a load of massive movie references, and also Titanic, um, not Titanic, um, Jaws. There's loads of references in this film, in this game. So if you like movie references, you're gonna love this game because it has a crap ton of them. And as well, the character is lovable. The, the controls are easy, super straightforward. It's a fantastic map, a, a massive world. It's really good. But as well though, playing this on multiplayer is so much fun. If you ever tried doing this on multiplayer, definitely give it a go because it's a lot of fun. And like I said though, I know 100% sure that you can get this in, day of, in this day of age because you can get it on the Xbox One. I do not know if there is any other versions out there unless you can try and find a ROM hack of this, which I know PewDiePie did when he first played this. But anyhow, that is my number one gem on my Nintendo 64. One of the rarest... Nintendo 64 games ever made. So that is my five picks of this of this uh, first season on my game gems. You of course you have yourself Worms Armageddon. You have Duke Nukem 64, GoldenEye 007, Rampage 2, and of course the gold standard Conquers Bad Fur Day. Now you may be thinking, what is the next episode? Well, I'm going to go ahead and. Step off from Nintendo six from the Nintendo side now, and we're gonna move on to one of its uprunning foes that sadly died because of Nintendo, and that is the Sega. We'll be looking at the Sega Mega Drive CD. So with that being said, the people on the sleep will see you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!